Sports World in Natick, our champions, Mike Poulin from Hudson, New Hampshire, and Tim Lipke from Londonderry, New Hampshire, take on Thomas O'Brien from Natick and Peter Pereira from Salem, New Hampshire, here on Candlepin Doubles. I'm Ed Harding, and welcome to Kendallpin Doubles, and thank you for letting us be a part of your afternoon. Take a look at what the good people at the Weeks Trophy and Award Company will be providing our bowlers today. They'll be able to take home some nice hardware to put on their mantelpiece to remind them of what happened in this next 30 minutes of bowling that you're about to see. If you've been with us the last couple of shows, I know we've been interrupted by the Indy Time Trials, but the last couple of shows, you've seen some great finishes. You've seen why we call Tim Lipke the Terminator, because he had a great finish. This was some really good shows. So we're going to see now if O'Brien and Pereira can upset what some very good momentum that's been built up by the championship team that's been going on so far. $500 for the team that wins today, $300 for the runners-up. We pay it for consecutive marks. We pay it for consecutive strikes. That's all the technical business work if you want to watch the artists at work. So Mike Poulin and Tom O'Brien, come on down. I've always wanted to do that, so I'll do it. I can't do that? Come on down? All right, stand on up. That's right. <laughs> Mucho bananas to say that. Whoa! You're looking at Mike Poulin. There's wood in front. Doesn't matter. You're looking at Tom O'Brien. Ten, opposite, spare in the opening box. It's the first box, first string. It's a cumulative score at the end of two strings of bowling that decides our championship team today. If there is a tie, then each bowler will step up and bowl a box at the conclusion of the two strings. These guys will do the first five boxes. Their partners will do the next five. The fill is six, tough leave to make it two marks in a row. Good bid, though. Doesn't matter how you get it, even if you come back on the backside and get the 10, which he does. Couple of 10s in the second box. And our championship team of Poulin and Lipke open up an early six pin lead. Third box, first string. Mike Poulin has an average of 125, a high single of 199, a high triple of 477. Tom O'Brien has an average of 127, a high single of 213, and a high triple of 492. Poulin has help, believe it or not. Right in the gap. The tweener, right tween the pins that were standing. Well, Pullen's done a nice job so far of leaving nothing standing. A 10 in the third box for him, up is it an 8 for Tom O'Brien. Increases the lead for our champions by two pins to eight. Fourth box, first string. Tough leaves for both. It's the first pin that Mike Poland's left standing today. And Tom O'Brien gets what they refer to in the business as a nice 10. Last box for these guys in this string. Their partners, Tim Lipke and Peter Pereira, waiting in the wings to carry the ball for a bit. Uh -huh. 
tell you what, I thought for a minute he had it. O'Brien has help. That's the shot he has. Just skirts the side of the seven and falls down. Bang! So a couple of tens take us through the fifth box. And so far, our champions, Mike Poulin and Tim Lipke, a total pinfall of 55. Tom O'Brien and Peter Pereira, a total pinfall of 48. A seven-pin lead for the champions. Early in the first string, plenty of bowling left. We'll be back in a minute. First look at the other partners, the other team members on this Afternoon of doubles. That's Tim Lipke. This is Peter Pereira. How do you do, Mr. Pereira? It's my favorite shot. Well, he cheated. He had help. <laughs> do it a manly way without help. <laughs> Great shot on both fronts. Peter Pereira starts with a strike. <laughs> Tim Lipke opening up, taking out the 7-10. And Mike Poulin yeah. is teasing me. The fill is nine for Tim Lipke. Great fill. The first of the two free throws that Peter has yields a seven. Oh, my. Game of inches. Just an inch or so to the right. Denies him two marks in a row. Pereira fills his strike with nine. And Lipke puts up a 10 in the box. Pereira puts up a 10 in the box. A couple of 10s in the seventh box, and through all the markings and whatnot, it's a seven pin lead for Poulin and Lipke. We move to the eighth box, first string. Eighth, ninth, and tenth to go in this string. And then a full second string to decide who our champion is today. The ten is gone. And the ten is gone too. Up. Nice mark. So both bowlers in two of the last three boxes have marked. Seven pins remain the difference between the two teams. That man's team, Tim Lipke's, has those extra seven pins. Right now, here's the bonus ball. The fill for him is eight. This to fill. The fill is nine. And as Ralph Stewart does his thing at the other end. The first to try to mark in this box is Tim Lipke. It's a tough shot, gave it a good bid. Here's Pereira. Yep. It's two in a row, three in a row. We'll pay him 50 bucks. It's a nine. Nine anyway, but it's a nine in the box. Foul had been called anyway. Pardon? Nice drop, nice leave. Pereira to fill. Fill it with seven. So set the numbers for you. Through boxes scored a two pin lead for Pereira and O'Brien, but we are, well, how do you do? It's gonna swing back the other way now.
Lipke marking in the 10th box. Pereira with the nine in the 10th box. So Pereira and O'Brien have a 122 in the first box. Tim Lipke already has a 121. And see what he fills this with. So add this on to that. You can add on eight. So you add on eight on the fill at a 129, and it's back up to a seven pin lead for Poole and Lipke over Pereira and O'Brien. The second string is coming up, but first we'll do this. Tom O'Brien and Mike Poulin have started off the second string. Seven pin lead for the Poulin Lipke team. Gives us a chance to remind you that this is the end of the 1992 93 men's double series. Next week, we'll begin with our championship series from Pilgrim Lane and Haverhill. The ladies' doubles, the men's doubles, the ladies' all events, and the men's all events to follow in the next four weeks. So for Tom O'Brien, a 10 for Mike Poulin, a mark. And for Mike Poulin, a chance to stretch on a seven pin lead. Tough leave. This to fill, stretch the lead. You can stretch it by nine, take it to 16. Mike Poulin has the patience of Job. That's why he was being patient. He got it. Two marks in a row. Three, we'll have to fork over more money to him. You know there's a money limit on this, Poulin. You know that. I tell you what, Tom O'Brien strikes it, knocks out everything except the tough pins. Fill it with six. Well, I'll, say, I'll put it this way then. There's pressure on this shot. It's 50 bucks for this shot, pooling. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> All right. That well, comes out of Don Riley's pocket anyway. <laughs> A great shot. Terrific shot. Off to the nine in the box for Tom O'Brien. Four horsemen left side plus. Nope, they, we lost one of them. All right, fill it with eight. And there it goes through for Tom O'Brien. And if you pardon my French pool, and if you're any kind of bowler, you'd get it. Good bid. I'll tell you what, there's been some terrific shots, really. In the fourth box at eight for Tom O'Brien, and the fourth box at nine for Mike Poulin. And a 34 pin lead for Poulin and Lipke over O'Brien and Pereira. We move to the fifth box, second string. Tell you what, if anybody wants a mark or a strike, it's Tommy O'Brien. He's been getting no falls today. But in this game, you earn your own. And Poulin and Lipke have been earning theirs. Oh, 
Caught a stuff down, one up, and he got him. Great string for Mike Poulin here as he hands off to his partner, Tim Lipke. <laughs> In four of the five boxes, he marks. That's the shot that Peter Pereira has. It's tough. Very tough. Oh, will they all go? No! Ten of the box for Peter Pereira. Ten of the box for... Tim Lipke, and they maintain their 40-pin lead. Poulin and Lipke by 40 pins over Pereira and O'Brien. We move to the seventh box, second string. 40-pin lead, four boxes to go. It's been a good string for the Poole and Lipke team. Sparefield nine, Sparefield six, Sparefield eight, Sparefield four. The, the fill for prayer is nine. The fill for Lipke is nine. And although this match is over, and although Poolin and Lipke will move on, we've still seen some great shots in it. Which means we still have the opportunity to see some more great shots. Both men marking in the box. And then, although the match may be over, Peter Pereira can mark in this box. He'll give him three straight, he'll earn some bonus money. And you're looking at Tim the Terminator Lipke and his partner, Mike Poulin. There you go. 275 or better will pay bonus money, of course, so we keep our eye on that. So we have more money we got to fork over to these guys. $200 more, Don Riley reminds me. <laughs> and they will end the 1992-93 season for men's doubles with a bang. Four horsemen left side. Oh, my. Just keep putting the bucks up there. So here's the status of the whole thing. Take a look at the score sheet, the scoreboard. O'Brien well, and Pereira are through with 104 on the string and a one, 226 on the afternoon. And Lipke is almost through. There's only one pin left, and he's not going to get it. <laughs> there is no justice in life. A terrific finish, a terrific string, a 164 in the second string, a 293 total, a 67 pin win for Poulin and Lipke. How do you do? We'll total up the cash register. It may take us hours to do it, but we'll be back in a minute.
Welcome back to Candlefin Doubles in the commercial. Tom said it's, it's kind of tough to smile on a day like this. Is it tough to smile on a day like this? Yeah, this kind of day you want to retire, and I'm just about getting to that attitude where it's just been too, it's been fun for 12, 15 years, I should say, but well, you, I, know, I, it's, you just don't have it anymore. I don't the know about fire's that. Not burning. You don't have enough gray hair in your head yet. You still got a few miles on a fastball, you know what I mean? I don't know. Not as fast as these two. They <laughs> bowled outstanding today. There was nothing, even if I did ball well, there was nothing probably we could have done about it. Boy, they had a tough, a terrific second string, didn't they, Peter? Huh? Oh, everything was just falling for him. He kept getting wood in front of the pins, and Timmy threw a nice ball the last five boxes. It's easy when it starts going like that. Well, you've got 300 bucks, and our thanks for a great show. Thank you, gentlemen, for entertaining us this afternoon. No, it's funny. Who says candlepin bowling doesn't pay? In, in roughly, what, 25 minutes of bowling today, you guys made 850 bucks between winning and bonuses and whatever? Congratulations. Thank you. Where's IRS? <laughs> Not to, you won't get can that I, from me. Can I use your social security number? <laughs> <laughs> they won't believe you with that much. A great second string, huh? Uh, we came on when we had to, and Mike got us off to a good start. And Don't give me a single without wood today, I'll tell you. Yeah. I couldn't hit anything, but in the last five, just came... Everything seemed to fall into place. It felt good, and it worked. You, you were having fun with it, too, Mike, and you and I were having fun with it, too. It's a lot of fun. You know, if you win, win few, it's more fun, but this show's great. You know, most of the time, it's two and out, we're gone. But uh, you guys do a great job, and it's just a lot of fun to be here. Well, it's been a great run, and our congratulations, because you guys end right now the men's double series for the year, and you end as champions, as kings of the hill. You mean we get to see you again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, congratulations. Great show. Thank you. Great show. And your, your son brought you good luck again, huh? Very good. Yeah. You did good job. Great show. <laughs> all right. <laughs> For all of us here at Kettleman Doubles, I'm Ed Harding. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.